So, hello and welcome to my fourth episode of my podcast, in which I just go to people who I find interesting and talk to them about something they are really interested in. And today with me is Carolina. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, so, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is uh, Carolina. I uh, am uh, 20 year, 28 years old, <laughs> not 20, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 28 years old, a uh, happy person living in Hisingen Island mm -hmm. with my brother and my two bunnies. Which is in Gothenburg. Which is in Gothenburg, yes. And I work as a teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start working as a physical education teacher in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I have finished my first year mm -hmm. uh, out of two on my master's degree. Okay. Uh, so. But you're still starting, start working? Yes, I miss my work. Okay. So I'm going to work like 80% and then study full time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know how that's going to go, but yeah. I'm really hoping it's going to be fine. Uh, yeah, I had something like that also when I studied. I studied 100% and I only worked 50%. <laughs> it works, but it's super hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. But you need the money even if you study. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you need to know that you're still doing some difference even though you hmm. are yeah so how long have you been studying uh, yet until now um you mean my master's degree or yeah, it, yeah, yeah generally yeah. uh i i started at the Gothenburg university in the fall of 2007 mm -hmm. um on my bachelor's degree yeah. at the teachers program uh i took my degree in the in December 2012 so mm. started working in January 2013 and uh, so it was a couple of years but I took some time off to work at the student union because oh, that yeah. was so fun <laughs> uh, yeah, we and have... I learned a lot of things mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah we have a friend who worked together with you there yeah. who I work with now Tobias hello Tobias <laughs> hello Tobias <laughs> yeah uh, okay great um so today's topic is roller derby. Roller derby. So perhaps just shortly, what is roller derby? Uh, roller derby is a full contact sport played on quads. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sport that uh, came to life again in uh, 2001 in Texas by the Texas Roller Girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, shortly after they started, then other teams popped up and then it was like a global effect that just took over and suddenly there were roller derby uh, teams everywhere okay interesting uh yeah so in uh, the but first is, when you say it's it came up again so it was before already yeah somehow? uh yeah if i remember correctly what i've read uh, i think roller derby started uh, out also in the u.s Mm -hmm. uh, in the 1920s, oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, as a um, as a public sport, mm -hmm. uh, oh, public sport, like a oh, my English is a little bit rusty, but um, well, uh, at at arenas where people could go and have fun and just see, and in the beginning, it wasn't a contact sport at all. Oh, okay. So there were both. It was always on a banked track um, okay. uh, and there were two uh, there were two teams mm -hmm. that played each other but yeah. in uh, one men's uh, two men's teams against each other and two women's teams okay. against each other mm -hmm. so you had both men and women on the track not simultaneously okay, so okay. first they would field out the men and then the men would do uh roll the derby on the track yeah, yeah. and then they would uh, the jam would end and they would put on women on the track okay, so they yeah, did yeah. Um, so not like football here where no. <laughs> you only go and see one game no <laughs> okay okay <laughs> uh, so so it would um, but then the person who started roller derby uh, thought that oh uh, maybe the public would uh, the public liked 
when action happened on the track. So people that started true, yeah. <laughs> hitting each other. And in the beginning, it was staged. Ah, okay. All the hitting. And then this person said that, well, if people like it staged, then why don't we do this properly and just incorporate for, it for and, real, okay. and do it for real? And then people didn't like it. Oh, I see. Because they still thought it was staged yeah. and ah. and it wasn't. Yeah, yeah it's so, difficult. <laughs> yeah, and, and then came Second World War. So people suddenly didn't have the money to go and watch the games um, and it kind of died out. out. Yeah. Uh, but I think that there, there have been teams throughout like the 60s and the 70s mm -hmm. uh, with no helmets oh. whatsoever, <laughs> which is like okay. crazy. Um, but then suddenly in 2001, Texas, they said like, okay, we're doing flat track roller derby. Let's do this. Cool. And they did. And, <laughs> and we are thankful. We, I am very thankful yeah. that they did that. But uh, right now it's mostly a sport which is played by women, as far as I understand. There seem to be some, uh, some teams w for men, but not that many. Yeah. Um... I think in the US and then in the United Kingdom, it's it's more spread. Uh, there are more men team, mm -hmm. men's teams okay. than there are in, uh, say, Scandinavia. But so just to get a number, is it yeah. like 5% or 40% or? Oh, I don't know the ah, numbers okay. because mm. I think that in the whole world, there are many, many teams. Okay. Um, and many leagues are just popping up all the time. Oh, okay. Uh, so I know, so just because, but just because you have a, a league doesn't mean that your league plays roller derby because you need an amount of skaters to, to be able to do that. And they need to learn to skate. So yeah. we have many leagues, even in Sweden, that are roller derby leagues, Okay. but they don't play games okay. in roller derby because they don't have enough skaters yet so they they are building up the so teams. they're building up the team so okay. so but but they're um i'm just happy there <laughs> absolutely so uh, what is your team called my team is called uh, gothenburg roller derby mm -hmm. and is one of the teams in gothenburg How many teams? Uh, there are three teams in Gothenburg. Okay. So Gothenburg Roller Derby, which is a women's team. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have Dock City Rollers, mm -hmm. also women's team. And then we have uh, Salty Seamen, Gothenburg Salty Seamen, <laughs> okay. who are the men's team. <laughs> And they also okay. have a junior league. Interesting names. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and... Um, And I'm just saying women and men's team just to make it easy. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry if any of you listening don't feel like you're incorporated in any of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so uh, but a bit back to, to, to you personally before we mm -hmm. jump in into the roller derby full. So We have a friend, Tobias, who always calls you Greken, which is called mm. uh, the Greek. Why does he do it? <laughs> uh, he does it because uh, I've been called that by my friend by my friend since I was like 13 or 12. And it's because my father is from Greece and my mother is from Sweden. And I'm born and brought up in Greece and mm -hmm. moved here when I was 18. Um, so... So it's kind of a name that has stuck, mm. but, um, you know, it fades slowly. Okay. Yeah. As, uh, as I mean, I... It, it's, the it's, longer I stay in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and, and also that nowadays I don't really go up to people saying, Hi, my name is Greken. <laughs> Because they will look at you and be like, whoa. Okay. What? Because <laughs> did you always speak Swedish or did you yeah. learn... It? Okay. So, so I'm bilingual. Okay. Uh, so, so, yes. but, but since in, in, or even more <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, in Sweden, my, my friend Nina, she had so many friends that were named Karo. Okay. And in order to keep us apart, she just, you know what? I'm going to call you Greken. 
<laughs> and and you know it it was like yeah okay and you know a little pet name and then it suddenly grew and mm. I went to the university and then everyone had like nicknames yeah. and I was like no I don't want a new one I already have one I'm just keeping <laughs> that um and and it's easy and it's funny yeah. and when people talk about Greek and everyone like just assumes that. I'm a person with a mustache and a hairy <laughs> chest. <laughs> but um, I may go for the mustache, up. but the hairy <laughs> chest is just not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, do, you, do you visit your parents or how often are you in, in um, Greece? I go to Greece like once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. I like going there for Easter. Because it's like Orthodox Easter oh. is the best Easter you can have, according Jesus. to me. So how is it different to? <laughs> well, it's it's uh, it's just it's uh, I love traditions, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe it's because my gra my grandparents really really celebrated Easter, mm -hmm. and it's kind of close to heart. Yeah. Um, and it's like you know we eat a lot. And I love eating, mm. and and it's it it just becomes so Greek when you just say, you know what, we're gonna have a whole lamb, <laughs> and <laughs> okay. then we are gonna have some more meat, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have some salads and some potatoes, and then some more meat, mm -hmm. and and we're just gonna eat until we can't walk, <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe maybe to, you there is going to be like cake afterwards. Nice. I and like and cake. and I like eating, and it's kind of a social thing. So um, and everyone is happy, and it's always so beautiful in the spring, uh, the colors and yeah. the flowers and everything. And yeah, I can imagine. I have never been to Greece, but I should go. Everyone should go to Greece once in their lifetime. I really believe that. <laughs> That's it's where democracy came from and everything. So yeah, cool. Uh, so we met in at the university many many years ago. What exactly have you been studying there? Uh, I studied at the teachers program. Okay, so it, and is it just you are a teacher, but but there are many kinds of teachers, like yeah. sports teacher or yeah, German I, teacher and stuff. I I studied at the um, <laughs> what they call the new old teachers program because <laughs> they have just come okay. up with so many uh, so i have a, a bachelor's teaching degree in like um in sport in physical education um in swedish language uh math uh the f uh, natural sciences mm -hmm. social sciences That's quite a lot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, and then uh, leisure time teaching uh, up to grade six. Okay. So uh, it was at the time where you could actually just study everything mm -hmm. and get a degree. Um, so it was a much better time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because uh, I. Me and Tobias, we studied computer science, and back then, in the first year was like you had to study this and that and that. It was like half month, half computer mm -hmm. science. <laughs> But after that, you could just choose and pick whatever you wanted, and this was super awesome. <laughs> mm. Yeah, when you get to to um, to decide for yourself what you want to. Exactly, because I think if you can't decide, then it's more like school, not that much like an university where you yeah. should are supposed to come out as a basically a better person yeah. and not only like have learned stuff which you can use in your job later on mm -hmm. yeah um, okay cool so let's get back to roller derby, roller derby. <laughs> okay. uh, could you explain how so so it's on roller blades is it called like that or no how is like it called? A, they're called quad skates quad skates Which are like this old eight. I remember it from the 80s. I had such not not exactly like that, but like with two in the front and two, and two in the, the back, back yeah. instead of this in lines which mm -hmm. we have today. Yeah. So like this, and yeah. then uh, then you have a lot of other stuff on you. What what is it? Uh, we have a lot of protection gear. Mm -hmm. So we you have um, a helmet, a mouth guard, wrist guards. 
elbow pads and knee pads and those are not optional mm -hmm. you have to have yeah. them and then we have people who have like um you know some uh, like rugby shirts i think they're okay. called like rugby plays where in order to protect their their upper chest and mm -hmm. uh, and back and we have people who have uh, like uh, things um for their um uh, ribs ribs mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, so so people have like all kinds of extras okay, just yeah. in just order to, to, to protect, protect themselves. themselves. Is it a violent sport, <laughs> well, or why do you have so much protection? I wouldn't say it's violent, but it's a full contact sport, and I mean you are on quads. Mm, yeah. So I mean it's not, we're not born with wheels under our feet. Absolutely not. Uh, yes. So so <laughs> when when you fall uh, you can fall really hard i see and when you get a hit that's really big you know you can fly for a couple of meters oh okay so because you are so fast it's, or? they're so fast and they're so hard and yeah. and it uh, it really it really depends i mean i have like i have knee pads under my knee pads like i have like extras okay yeah uh, so Yeah, because you, you still you you're still going hopefully to do something else than roller derby later in your life. Yeah, <laughs> and you will need all your parts <laughs> in order to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, But I guess it helps a lot with with all the padding. So yeah. yeah. So the, are people getting hurt much, or is it like sometimes, but not not that much? I mean, we do we do get the the casual um, um, what do you say the twisting of the ankle yeah. or uh, or a, a rib that's like mm. have a, has a crack in it or concussions oh, are yeah. those I think but you those do are have the helmets and everything so. yeah but but still concussions are really easy okay. to obtain if you're not careful okay I because. See. When you, I mean, I did that a lot. I fell on my, uh, on my back, and mm -hmm. then I didn't have the neck muscles to keep my head up, so my head would bam on the floor. And I mean, okay, once or twice, but then I yeah. did it every time. So I got those small concussions, and then suddenly you get a big hit, mm -hmm. and you fall on your head, and then yeah. it just not good. Absolutely. And uh, so you really learn that, okay. It's it's bad with a broken bone, but also concussions. We have we have players that stop playing roller derby due to concussions, okay. too many concussions. Mm. Uh, and yeah. so, watch your heads, people. <laughs> so let's talk about the track, which you are uh, on. It's an oval track. Yeah. Which is how big is it? About. Um, I would say that's about 100 to 150 meters okay. long. Yeah. Uh, like. Are they different oh, for different in different places or? No, it's the same okay. standard flat okay. track. Okay. Um, so I think it's like four and a half meters wide, and then 100 or 150 meters. On the on the round, is it a special track for you guys, or is it something which is used for by someone no. else also? No, it's a special track for for us. Oh, for, so for so flat if you want to track. have such a team, then you first have to build a track. <laughs> if you want to, you we usually practice at the venues here in Gothenburg, mm -hmm. uh, like for my team, and we have uh, gotten the lines painted on the floor. Okay, so we don't have to lay a track. Okay, oh, I see. So, so you you can have either. Um, uh, But is it outside or inside, or where is it? We have an outside track at okay. Frihamnen, mm -hmm. which we call Örlevi, which is kind of funny, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's on concrete. Okay. Uh, but then I, in the halls, on in our venues, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, like wood wood floor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so as long as the surface is like flat, yeah. flat mm. then then you can play derby. Okay. Uh, and, and does every team have their own here in Gothenburg? Or how many teams are here in Gothenburg? Uh, we have three teams in Gothenburg. We have Gothenburg Roller Derby, which I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. We have Dark City Rollers. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, uh, Vestsvenska Roller Derby Sällskapet. 
uh, which have a men team, a okay. men's team, uh, Gothenburg Salty Seamen. <laughs> yeah, I see. Funny yeah. names. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> and so, 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 I all the teams uh, training on the same tracks, or do, do, uh, does everyone have their own venue? Oh, we don't have our own venues. We're not there yet. Ah, okay. So we we just um, through uh, IOFF which is uh, Idrott och Föreningsförvaltningen here in Gothenburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, we book ourselves times in the venues so we can have practices. Which is from, from the city. From the city, okay, yeah. yeah. And, and, and this is how it goes in, in Sweden yeah. overall. Um, and it's, uh, it's different in different cities, but most cities now, I think, have painted tracks mm-hmm. in their venues okay. to make it easy and easier and 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 now i i think the cities have um and by painted tracks what do you mean well it's it's we have lines okay. that 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 you so, can, so you can see that there's an inside line and an outside okay. line on the on the track so and it's that's like special the, for roller derby or yeah yeah and then amongst our lines then you have the handball players oh, yeah. lines okay. and yes, the football lines and the basketball lines and okay. so mm. um yeah okay cool <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the game yeah uh, how does it work so yeah, a couple of people on the track on on your uh, what is it called? Not skates or quads? quads. Yeah. Jesus, it's you can say skates. <laughs> it's okay. not bad to say skates. Okay. So, so quads because the four <laughs> and skates are something yeah, else. But yeah, it, but I think roller skates is roller also skates. Okay. also uh, as long as you don't say in lines, I think you're fine. <laughs> because they are not in. They're line. not in lines. No. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, so the game mm-hmm. uh, on the track. You f- you have um, uh, you have two periods of thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, each period is divided into jams, which are two minutes long. Long. So what happens after two minutes? Now? After two minutes, uh, the jam is called off, mm-hmm. and then you switch players on the track, and then thirty seconds pass, and I then see. you're into a new jam okay. uh, that may last two minutes, and then they calling off the jam, and 30 seconds pass, you feel new people on the track, so okay. you you because have, you you switch people all the time because you it's need like, to breathe. It's like in hockey, where you have, in hockey they have three teams, yeah. uh, and two teams are on the on the bank, and one team is playing, mm-hmm. and then after some time they switch. Is it like that? Uh, I don't know, because I don't watch hockey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but what I mean is, like, how many people are in one team? Uh, there are 14 people mm-hmm. in each team. And okay. There are 14 people in each team, and you have five people on the track okay. from each team. And then after two minutes, you those switch people. five people go down from the track and someone... Uh, yeah. Okay, but if you have 14 people... Oh, they're, they're different rotations, and some are just jammers, and some are just blockers, and some people ah, are so, jammer so, blocking. So it's not like three teams in one team? No, okay. no, it's, it's not. It's just so if you're tired, then you go down, and, yeah. and then someone else takes yeah. the place. Okay, I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, um, so each team fields five persons mm-hmm. on the track. Uh, four are called blockers, mm-hmm. and one is called a jammer. And the jammer is easy to spot because they have a helmet cover with a star on. Mm-hmm. And the jammer is the only one in the team who can score points. Okay. Is it... Uh, are you... So if you are a jammer, are you always a jammer or do you switch also during the game? Oh, it, it depends okay. on, on the teams. I mean, I saw a, a, a team from Denver coming over and... Everyone jammed and everyone blocked. Okay. And then mm-hmm. you have teams that you have, you are just a jammer. Okay. Yeah. And that's the only thing you do because you excel at that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the jammer uh, gets points mm-hmm. and points are gained by passing your opponent's hips. Okay. Mm-hmm. So each opponent, jammer and blocker, is a point. Okay, so 
when you pass the hips, so with your whole body, you have to with pass? Your okay. oh, with your hips. Oh, with your hips. Okay, I see. Um, so hips are really important in derby. So when you pass and then fall back again, that's still a point. That's still a point. Okay. Yes. So once your hips are, once you've passed the hips, okay. you have the point. Okay, cool. Um, and the first thing that happens when the first, so all the blockers on the, on the track mm -hmm. are called a pack. Okay. They're a pack of blockers. So like four, four people are the blockers and one is the jammer. Yes. And, uh, and the pack is the blockers. Okay. And mm -hmm. the pack is the blockers from both teams. Oh, okay. I so, see. So you have a white and a black team mm -hmm. and their blockers are called a pack. And it's because you need to have a pack in order to play mm -hmm. roller derby. Okay. Uh, so if all players from uh, the white team goes to the penalty box mm -hmm. and you only have players from the black team on the track, the there is no pack. So the black team cannot block the I white jammer because ah. there is no pack. Ah, okay. What happens then? Uh, uh, I've never seen it happen. Okay. So, so <laughs> <laughs> but, but it could happen. But I've never seen it happen. But but what what happens then is that uh, I don't know if they call. I think they're. I don't know if they would call it off, mm -hmm. um, or because you you can have four blockers in the box mm -hmm. technically. Okay. Yeah. So, but I don't. I, I think they would just go on. So okay. when when do you get in the box or? <laughs> uh, you go to the penalty box when you have done something illegal. So mm -hmm. you have. Um, wait, can we can we just keep talking a bit about um, the game and okay, then we can yeah, go to the penalty box? Yeah. Uh, because I wasn't I wasn't really uh, done. Um, yeah. So what happens when the first whistle blows is that the jammers are fighting to get lead. Mm -hmm. So and and lead jammer is assigned to the to the jammer that gets out of the pack first. Okay. And why you want to become lead jammer is because then you have the power to call off the jam before the two minutes are done. So you control the game. Okay, so you could, if you're in the lead, you could just call it off and then you have won? Or how, what do you mean? Uh, no. You, why would you call it off? You would call it off because uh, if, uh, if black jammer gets out like black team's jammer gets out first mm -hmm. from the pack and and becomes lead jammer mm -hmm. and then right behind that jammer is the white jammer mm -hmm. then black jammer can say that you know what i'm gonna take a point mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna call it off so i get one point and you get zero points ah because they haven't passed, passed yet. okay point. okay so so uh, during the first passing which is called an initial pass you just uh, fight over the lead jammer status. Okay. And then after that initial pass, when you pass once again, then you get the point. And this all happens in those two minutes of, yeah. uh, what is it called again? Jam. Jam, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and we have um, uh, legal blocking zones mm -hmm. and illegal blocking zones. So, uh, so, and that's the zones where you, you, you can legally block during the game. Because my job as a blocker mm -hmm. is to help the my jammer get through the pack, okay, but also obtain the other jammer in the pack, okay, yeah. Because I want my jammer to get out first, get lead, and then score as many points as possible. So one ja if one jammer, if you get the other jammer stopped, then your jammer could go like yeah. three times and yeah. would score a lot of points. And mm -hmm. the other, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so so the. It's illegal to block someone on their back. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's a safety issue. Yeah. So, and then it's illegal to trip someone with their skates. Mm -hmm. It's illegal to push someone with your hands. So you're not allowed to use your hands. Okay. You cannot push someone out with your elbow, mm -hmm. but you can use your upper body. And, and I mean, I can block someone with my back. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. But no one can come crashing in my back. Okay. Yeah. And and if I fall, then they will get a penalty for it. I see. Okay. And they will go to the penalty box. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for how long? For the whole jam? For the whole mm, game? Or for uh, it's thirty seconds. I see. Mm. Um. So and those start when 
you hear the referee whistles, mm -hmm. you hear your number, you go to the penalty box, and when you sit your ass down on the box, then the clock starts. Okay. And, and if the jam is called... Mm -hmm. and you're still in the penalty box, then they will stop the clock in the penalty box. I see, okay. And the clock will start again once the next jam starts. Okay. So so the clocks in the penalty box only run while sitting the, the, uh, jam is and on. the jam is on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have points. We What did we forget still about the game? Uh when you may be um, hitting mm -hmm. <laughs> which is it's it's like it's a full contact sport and hitting with your body and doing body checks is legal as long as you do it on okay. legal target zones so it, we use our hips a lot mm -hmm. uh, like you use your hips to keep someone behind you or to shove someone off the track so mm -hmm. that they are out of bounds and If you watch Derby, you will see that sometimes uh, what people do, what, what blockers do is that they take out the jammer and then they do what we call bridging. Okay. So uh, they they fall back within three, what is it, uh, three meters mm -hmm. from each other. Okay. Uh, because that's how far away you are allowed to block okay. uh, from your teammates. Ah, okay, yeah. So you have that. And uh, why you want to, uh, why the jammers fall back then is because when, or blockers, uh, when you get pushed out of bounds, you need to get in behind the person that was in front of you. Okay. Either that is the one who pushed you out or someone in front of them going back. Mm -hmm. um, because you can never change your relative position to the better. Okay, yeah. I um, see. Yeah. So, but then the three meters rule is just to to still have a pack, a pack. which is uh, together, and yeah. so so not everybody is like. Completely... Yeah. So so you you cannot chase the jammer. Ah. Around the whole track. Ah. Okay. Okay. Because some at some point they need to get out and be able to get through the points. I, yeah. Okay, yeah. But it, are you are you going around the track quite fast or is the jammer fast or is it slow or how? Uh, it depends on how the pack moves mm -hmm. and and what level they're on. Uh, I But mean the the, the, the higher level, uh, I mean the the higher the higher the level of derby. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that the packs are are more in control of the speed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the speed up Okay, okay. Like always being in front of the jammer because they don't want to lose points or yeah. anything. And sometimes they're like really having, if you have the jammers in the pack and both teams mm -hmm. have a jammer in their wall yeah. and they're really plow stopping, you can see that, oh my God, they're not moving. <laughs> like <laughs> they've it? been like pushing for one minute and they've just moved what? 10 meters ah. it's like nothing <laughs> and, and that's okay if the, the yeah. there's no rule for no for stone. okay no the, the only rule is you, you're not allowed to stop block so i i okay. need to move my feet the whole time while i'm blocking because otherwise i get a stop block okay um, and you can't go back i guess or is it allowed uh, i can't push someone backwards mm -hmm. because that's a clockwise block because derby is played counterclockwise I see. Uh, okay, yeah. So I can't I can't push someone backwards on the like clockwise on the track because that's a penalty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the wrong way. Mm -hmm, okay. And uh, okay, yeah. So the timeouts. Mm -hmm. It was um, every <laughs> every team has. Uh, I think my boyfriend might kill me for not knowing this <laughs> properly. <laughs> He's a referee. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, uh, each team has one official review per uh, uh, half. Per, ha per half. Mm -hmm. Is it called half? Yeah. Yep. One half. Um, and during an official review, the team can go into... Uh, the middle to the head referee and say that, you know what, I saw something, uh, you didn't call something on someone, 
I want them to get this penalty because they did this and that. Uh, and then the officials will talk about it and then they will say that, you know what, you're right. Mm -hmm. Someone saw it, they weren't really comfortable with taking the call, but okay. we think you're right. Or, you know what, we didn't see it, no call will stand, go back to your bench. And that is, um, yeah, so that's how you use your official review. Okay. And every team has one per, per half. Per half, okay. And then each team has three timeouts during a whole game they can take. But wait, one timeout per half and three timeouts? So. Three, uh, uh, one official timeout, which is ah, okay. where you can like say to the referee that you ah, know what, you it. did something okay. right. Yes, yes. And then you have three three team timeouts three, that you can okay. take. And those th and those team timeouts, I think they are like one minute long. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. I don't remember. Yeah. I really need to freshen up on the rules. <laughs> this is really bad. <laughs> how really many, bad. <laughs> how many referees are there? Um, let's see. I think there are seven referees on skates. Okay. Like who stand in the center? Uh, we you have uh, two jammer referees, mm -hmm. so each for each for each jammer, one for each jammer, mm -hmm. and then you have one pack referee, mm -hmm. uh, two pack referees in the middle, mm -hmm. one in front pack and one that just uh, where the pack is. Okay. Yeah. So there are four in the in the on the inside, and then you have three outside pack referees mm -hmm. that are also positioned like one in front pack mm -hmm. like they're called uh, like outer pack referee and then you have one in the front one where the pack is and one in the back so there are quite many referees yes and is then it difficult to see what's <laughs> happening i guess i mean uh, uh, i have tried and uh, when w when you ask people like well would you say that this is a penalty? And they would say like, yeah, but it depends on uh, <laughs> how you define impact. So sometimes, yeah. uh, you know, you can get calls for something that you're saying like, yeah, but it didn't have an impact. But the referee th said that it was an impact. So you just do what you're told. Okay. Uh, and then, but the, the skater referees, they're just giving out the penalties. Mm -hmm. Then you have people who uh, don't wear skates and do a crazy amount of work in mm -hmm. order for us to be able to play a game. Okay. So you have on the inside, uh, infield of the track, mm -hmm. you have one jam timer that times the clock, the jam that has the period clock and the jam clock. Mm -hmm. So you know that okay, yeah. everything runs smoothly. And then you have um, a penalty board, like mm -hmm. a whiteboard, mm -hmm. where you have a person that writes down all the penalties that are given to, okay, um, zero, zero, three, zero, got a back block, then I'm going to put a B there mm -hmm. because that was their first penalty. And so, so that the teams can see how many penalties there are per person. You're allowed to have seven penalties in a game. Okay. On your seventh penalty, you're falling out. Mm -hmm. And a penalty is when you, when you go out for the... You go to the box. Okay. Mm -hmm. To the penalty box. Um, and in order for that person to write down stuff on the whiteboard, you need to have someone who are telling them yeah. what to write on the whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have a penalty tracker. Mm -hmm. Um. Then you have uh, two lineup trackers that are writing down on their sheets what uh, players are lining up each jam mm -hmm. on the track. Oh, so one yeah. for each team. So you're writing up the jammer and the blockers, mm. and then you're um, and then you have the scorekeepers mm -hmm. who are working with the jammer referees who are writing down how many points each jammer gets with their pass, mm -hmm. if they get zero, one, two, three, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then they are telling the scoreboard operator what to put on the scoreboard. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the penalty box manager mm -hmm. that manages the box, the penalty box. And usually the penalty box manager uh, has control over 
um, the jammers, well, not control over, but they they see to it that when jammers sit down, they run their clocks. Yeah. And then they have one um, uh, penalty box uh, tracker, I think they're called. Oh my God. Mm. I guess I'm going to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so each for one team. Okay. That are tracking, they, they're clocking the, the, the blockers. Um. And I think those are it. Mm-hmm. Cool. So the, the, there are a lot of bunch of people. And yeah. then you have track ninjas who are, um, you know, the referees get around or you're going out of bounds because you have um, the, the, you're taping the track. Mm-hmm. There is a rope on yeah. the track so that the players can sense when they're out of bounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes that tape just falls or it just and broke to fix and someone fixes it and then the referees can say that you know what that needs fixing and the track ninja says i'm here i have a lot of tape <laughs> let me fix this mm. so the, there are a lot of people doing a lot amount of work in order for us to play mm-hmm. and we should all be very thankful for it because do you don't pay them i guess no <laughs> it's a, yeah. no they don't get paid and afterwards there's a lot amount of work because after each game there's a stats book Mm-hmm. That each that the teams get, mm-hmm. uh, where you can like every sheet of paper that any non skating official has gets into this stat book, okay. this Excel document, mm-hmm. and then you can just see stats. Uh, the stats. Yeah. Okay. Um, and are they online afterwards somewhere, or is it like they, you get thing? them on email? Okay. Like uh, they're not uh, public. Okay. Uh, I have never seen a team making their stats public. I see. Okay, cool. So what what kind of people uh, are playing and uh, like those people who I, you mentioned right now? I You are the only one who, who I know. <laughs> are you sure I'm the only one you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You have to go and check all your friends on oh, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> But so uh, is it like basically everyone or is it some kind of uh, special special people people? (laughs) (laughs) you need to be somewhat special to do roller derby um it's it's very physical but it's also a very mental Mm -hmm. uh, sport because you you need to be strong in order to put yourself through It, it's hard mm-hmm. you know you you get you you are going to get hit yeah you know that the moment you step on the track you might break a leg mm-hmm. okay you know it, yeah. you know it happens it, it doesn't it happens more at practices okay. than it does on uh, on, game. on games mm-hmm. on games you can usually well i said you can get a concussion or you can like sprain an ankle or get really get hit in the face really hard Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I've never seen anyone break anything. Mm-hmm. Um, that usually happens during practices because then you're like more laid back and uh, you suddenly do some stupid move and you like trip and fall wrong. Okay. Yeah, it, it it's like stupid. Uh, <laughs> but but you know it, it it can happen to anyone. Yeah. So I can fall off down the stairs. It doesn't happen, but it doesn't matter. So. I, uh, but I, I would say that people who are doing this are, it's it's also an underground sport with a feministic roots. Okay. So, so a lot of people doing this are are looking for um, uh, for um, um, for a place to to be secure mm-hmm. and be safe. Okay. Uh, and roller derby can surely provide that, mm-hmm. um, because we are mostly uh, non-male people. Okay. Yeah. Who do roller derby? Yeah. I mean, in Sweden, there are like two men's teams. Mm-hmm. And how many women's teams? Um, Just I would say like thirty, thirty-two. Okay. So you know, it's it's the equivalent. Is not. I I don't fear that. Men are going to take over roller derby as a sport. <laughs> no, okay. I don't have that fear. Yeah. Uh, as long as we can get the junior league growing and getting in younger people and mm-hmm. and so, keeping it alive. 
So what ages are playing from to? <laughs> uh, I know there are, I mean, in uh, there are minor leagues and there are junior leagues and then you have adult leagues. Mm -hmm. And usually the minor and junior leagues, they are like under uh, leagues from the bigger leagues, like the adult yeah. leagues. So yeah. in Crime City Rollers from Malmö, mm -hmm. they have the Candy Snatchers, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is their junior league. Yeah. And I think, uh, and here in, uh, I don't really know what the junior league for um, Vestsvenska is called. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I mean, there they, do, they have... I think their youngest one was four or five, and the oldest is sixteen. Mm -hmm. So it rages, and uh, there, there, it's it's like a big gap between. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how old you are? Uh, but mm -hmm. in in my league, we don't accept people under eighteen. Okay. And and I mean, juniors are also allowed to play derby. Mm -hmm. I think their set of rules is a bit different because. They're still juniors. Yeah. I, I would say that it's the same like with hockey. Yeah. Like the, okay. Yeah, yeah. Some, some different. Um, and then for 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 the normal league, what what is the upper age basically? Uh, I think in our team, the oldest one would be like what forty four. Mm -hmm. So, oh, 42, 43, yeah. something yeah, like that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so you don't need to stop when you get to 30 or anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. You stop when you want to, when you start when you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, it's that. that's what's so great about this sport is that no one is going to look at you and say that, you know what, you don't have the body for it or you don't have the age for this or mm -hmm. you don't have the mental... Uh, strength to do it okay. or the body strength to do it because you grow mm -hmm. and you in derby you need all the bodies you can get i mean we went to uh, Ghent in uh, belgium mm -hmm. and we played against birmingham blitz teams mm -hmm. and they had these two blockers on the track that were massive but they could skate mm -hmm. Dis you know despite being i don't know no, I'm, I'm not that tall, but I would say they were like, what, 180, 185 tall? Oy, and then okay. they were massive. Yeah. And, you know, you couldn't move them. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, okay, I, I'm just standing here taking like one and a half lane on the track. And you can just try to pass me, but I'm just going to stand here because... I do that. And, you know, it was muscle beneath. It, it's not that, you know, you see yeah. someone often. It, it, derby, like, changes your mm -hmm. your ideas and your perceptions of people. You're like, yeah, okay, you may be big, but you're still hardcore. Mm -hmm. And 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 that doesn't matter. So you don't have to be... I remember when I did... Uh, I did gymnastics when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I know my teacher, gymnastics teacher, said to my mom that Carolina need, needs to lose weight. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I, I didn't know I had gained five kilos during summer and I was like nine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's you know, yeah. that, that thing. And, and it's so refreshing being in a community that it nobody cares. Okay. Yeah. As long as you stand on skates, you work hard yeah. on your skating skills, you can go to the best team in the world, in the world. You can be short, you mm -hmm. can be tall. Mm hmm it's it's uh, they have a player Numi. i think she's she, uh, i think they have uh, the number on their shirt is like 137 because that's how tall they are <laughs> okay you know, and yeah. and it's it it doesn't mean that you can't play derby because you're 195 yeah meters tall yeah yeah that is true yeah so all size and shapes all size and shapes just bring it mm -hmm. cool cool yeah uh, so uh how did you personally get into this sport? Uh, my friend Nils, my friend Nils had um, had a girlfriend who started playing derby, and uh, Gothenburg Roller Derby uh, was playing against Copenhagen kid, uh, Kick Ass Cuties mm -hmm. here in Gothenburg, and he said, "Come on, let's go." I was like, "Yeah, oh, maybe I don't know." Oh, boo! It's like <laughs> what? What can be so hardcore? 
and then I went and I was like, oh my God, they have the paintings and the faces and they wear fishnets and tutus and they have, they have funny names. I mean, I, uh, I really, th- there was this, they had a bout program with people's names and, mm-hmm. and faces. And I was like, oh my God, th- the name here is, okay, Madfish or Arty Farty <laughs> or uh, the final countdown um, and Julie Jed and they had like all in and it was you know it's it they played with everything and it mm-hmm. was kind of funny mm-hmm. like Fräulein F Reckless and you're like is it Freckless or Reckless or <laughs> what do they mean <laughs> I don't get it but okay so what's your um, name in the role uh, my name is De Mauer ah Okay. Um, Which is German, German, I guess. Mm -hmm. For and um, the wall. The wall. Yeah. Uh, It. I got my first name was uh, after we went to this game. We Mm -hmm. went home to my friend Johanna and we got drunk and then we experimented with different names that we would have. What would be our derby names? (laughs) And they were like, "Well, you're Greek, so it of course it would be like flying feta." Or frying feta. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because uh, when I moved here and I started working at a bakery, uh, I would they would say, I would like a, a feta cheese salad. And I would say, hey, yo, give me a feta. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that in Gothenburg, feta, feta is slang for cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know that. And here I was telling the customers that they had ordered a cunt <laughs> salad. <laughs> so, yeah, my friends knew that. So they're like, yeah, but it's it's a funny story. And I was like, yeah, it's it's kind of funny and a little embarrassing. But whatever, I can yeah. work with that. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the Derby community was like, yeah, that's a funny name. Until you actually met people from the municipality of Gothenburg City. And, you, and everyone was like, yeah, what's your Derby name? And I was like... Frying feta, and it's like, whoa, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. It was kind of... Mm, Too yeah, embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was... Uh, I, I didn't feel quite comfortable. Yeah. And then I was out one night, and my friend Anders, she was like, yeah, what did you what did you learn this week? So I showed him some of our moves. Mm-hmm. And, was, and he was like, yeah, okay, let me try and block you. Okay. I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, but you... you you're not moving. I was like, yeah, you're not doing it properly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a big man. I, w- I should be able to move you. <laughs> you're like a wall. Oh, your name should be Demauer. Ah. I was like, yeah, okay. Okay, we can, I can work with that. Mm-hmm. And then someone said, you know what? You're going to have to live up to that name. Ah. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm going to have to live up to that name. <laughs> and then you had to train. <laughs> and then I had to train. Yes, and um, and then I played against uh, team um, this February, and the photographer took a picture of me, and on the on the shot on Facebook, he mm-hmm. said that he wrote, "I will never question why she has that name." <laughs> and then I felt that mission yeah. accomplished. Now I can eat cookies <laughs> the rest of my life. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How do how often do you train, or basically, is it once a week? Uh, we train on uh, like this semester. Mm-hmm. We had training on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, Ooh. and our training sessions are about two, two and a half hours, maybe. Okay. Um, depending on what day it is, and then I I try to squeeze in one or two. Uh, sessions a week off the track like usually uh, doing some uh, squats mm-hmm. with uh, um, the weights. with weights uh, like lifting uh, I should be running but I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so so mm-hmm. for, for me it's it's uh, since since I'm a blocker I really need the muscle and I've been training my back a lot because our backs and, and knees, they, they take the most hitting. Yeah. Like when, when I fall, I mean, I weigh, I weight, what, 77 kilos. Mm. And you fall on that, yeah. with, like with force, it, it just, um, and I don't remember the physics, right? But mm. it's more than 77 kilos that are falling on my <laughs> knees. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and it's on a on a hard concrete. So. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have another player on you. Oh. So so you you really need to. So every every time I I am off skates, going to the gym or doing yoga at home or whatever, I feel like mm-hmm. I really need to do this now is to prevent injuries. Yeah. So, so it's, and it's not that I don't have any injuries. Mm. I mean, we get those small yeah. injuries all the time, but, but, um, but it's, it's important. Yeah. So, and, 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 um, every time I, um, I meet a new skater, I'm like, yeah, what do you train off skate? And they're like, I don't, I'm like, I didn't either, but you should, because mm. if you do it now, it will help you later. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So what do you like most about roller derby? Uh, I like the heat like of the game, okay. the adrenaline rush that you get. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm um, I'm not that interested in in the in the all around things that involve roller derby. I'm just interested about the sport. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so for me it's it's more that I want to do good games. I want to play hard. I want to train hard. Mm-hmm. This is like the first time I've ever been in a team sport. Yeah. And that's very new. And I think that's new for many of the people that are involved in roller derby. Yeah. They have not done any other sport before. There are not that many sports where, uh, with f- like team sports for women uh, somehow. Soccer, okay. But otherwise... Uh... Soccer, handball... You have volleyball and you would have hockey and inline mm. hockey. I mean, th- there are, but but um, in, it's it's like I don't I don't know. It, it's when when I watch beach volleyball and you're like, yeah, okay, but you're half naked. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, and and it doesn't matter mm-hmm. because it you know it it shouldn't matter. Yeah, but somehow. It does. Still does. And roller derby has become more uh, athletic mm-hmm. because now most of the to-dos are gone or the fishnets are gone. People are really wearing um, uh, sports sport, wear. Sports wear. Mm-hmm. The, the shirts that we have, our bautki, our bout fit is like in a material that can breathe and is not only caught on yeah. shirt that we kind of sprayed our name on. Mm. And uh, so all in all, roller derby is growing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, m- and when I started, everyone would put makeup on and now that's gone. Okay. And maybe it is because now it's more easy to play more games uh, than before. Yeah. So before it would be more of a spectacle. But now when you can play like seven games per semester, mm-hmm. it's not that fun to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and a semester is how long? Uh, um, in the fall, our, our fall semester is um, August to December, mm-hmm. and then now we have January to July due to the Swedish championships that are during uh, SM Veckan at Skridskuförbundet. So, mm-hmm. uh, and that's usually in the first or second um, weekend in July. So our this semester is always a bit longer mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can feel it because many, you know, you, you go on semester mm-hmm. uh, on vacation okay. from, uh, from your, um, from your work, but yeah. then you still have to do derby. So you're not really on vacation. And then you go to Swedish championships and then you have one week left of your vacation that you go back to work and you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had three weeks, but no, I, I actually just had one. <laughs> so yeah, th- that's but kind it of seems hard to be worth mental. it. So. <laughs> yeah, I I like it, but the off season when you get like one one month where you're not training and you don't mm. you don't have to be at Angerieds Arena at seven and then come and then training is done at eight at ten yeah. and then you're home at eleven and then you're going to shower and eat and you're at bed at twelve and you m- may. Or may not fall asleep then, mm. but you still have to get up in the morning to get to work. I mean, it's sure. it's a lot of hardship on. That's why I mean that it's hard on the body, but it's also hard mentally because yeah. you need to get your sleep. Mm. But it's because because you train so much. So yeah, sure. 
you talked a little bit about uh, what changed like this uh, colorful outfits and so on could you just uh, tell us how it was or what because that's that what what i've seen when i researched it a bit mm -hmm. then th that was the most obvious thing so like the makeup the colors uh, the names and stuff like this um because that's quite different to to other sports so just uh we still have the names although you you will still may you will see some of the players changing their derby names to their uh uh, original like names so the real name the real, real name. name okay yeah um and uh but i i like that we have our pseudonyms mm -hmm. i think it gives us an edge and you can go into your alter ego and just kick ass on the track mm -hmm. and then come home and just cuddle with your bunnies and be happy <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I um I remember when I started I also I had like colorful um, uh, pants on and uh, like licra shorts and uh, and it was yeah and and people had that but now it's just I th I think since you when you start seeing it more as training mm, then it gets uh, more serious then then it gets more serious and and I don't I don't feel like. If you come to training in fishnets, or if you're about, or if you're like playing a game in fishnet, mm. that that's not necessarily bad. I think that's kind of cool that people are still mm -hmm. doing it, and people have the uh, the energy to still put makeup on their faces. Yeah. I can't because I sweat so much that it just runs off, and it just looks like I have cried my <laughs> eyes out and it looks horrible mm -hmm. and, and you're really not ever looking good in your derby pictures whatsoever so mm. having like really black panda eyes is not helping <laughs> uh, so so yeah so it's it's not um but but I mean I I, I can't say I miss it because I wasn't a part of it mm -hmm. when yeah. that was because I came in later okay. and it took me a year be before I can do I could do my minimum skills, which okay. is um, you have your rookie training period mm -hmm. where you learn how to skate. So you can't just say I'm going to start roller derby and then suddenly you're on the track doing stuff. Okay. Uh, because you're we have like an eight or 12 week program. Mm hmm where you learn how to do basic skating skating skills. Okay. And then uh, once or twice a semester, we say that welcome to do the minimum skills test. Mm -hmm. And the minimum skills test is a test that's provided by WFTDA, which is the Women's Flat Track Derby, Asso Derby Association, mm -hmm. uh, which is based in the US. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and they make the rules of flat track roller derby, and those are the rules that we play by. Um, and they say that, you know what, all skaters should, uh, in order to play derby, you need to have passed your minimum skills and you need to have passed the rules test. Okay. Yeah. Which is a theoretical a test? A theoretical test, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, you pass your minimum skills and then you get to train derby. Before mm. that, you train to plow stop, to T stop, to but doing like turnovers and get to know your skates mm -hmm. and get to feel the wheels under your feet and get control of that because we need to be it's it's re, it's it's unsafe as it is. Yeah. You can never say that, oh, we play safe derby because you have wheel, wheels under your yeah. feet. That's not normal. <laughs> and, and you are hitting each other, which is not good. And you, you know, and, and stuff happens. Yeah. So you really need to know that when you're playing, you're playing with people who have actually mastered some kind of skills level. But that's for the games. Do you train? So as a beginner, do you yeah. train together with the other people? Or um, is it a special training? It depends. Sometimes we have uh, trainings together. We're not, we're not after, I, I think it's after the four or five five uh, first weeks mm -hmm. then we mix it up like once a week for an hour but then it's also more skills okay yeah is there a trainer or how does it work yeah we have a training committee and i think this is how it works in most derby leagues like you have a training committee and uh, 
they train the league. And then the our B team has their captains who are training the B team, and then the A team has their captains that are training the A team. So A team and B team, what does that mean? Uh, the A the the A team is like the the team where that uh, that plays uh, our games, mm -hmm. and B, the B team plays games too. But when uh, Uh, when we play like WFTDA sanctioned games, we are sending our A team. Like the A team is the best players that we have yeah. in like our the league. How many? F 14, 15 best players. Yeah. Mm, okay. And the B team is also 15 players, or is it? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I don't know how many there are now, but I think there are like 14, 15 people playing in the B team, and they and why you want to have a B team and let them play is because then they will. Uh, evolve as players mm -hmm. and then someday they will come up to the team and they move up okay yeah interesting okay very cool so if someone would like to start how do how do you start where do you go what how do you do it and <laughs> uh, i would say depending on where you live you click like If you live in uh, in Stockholm, you mm -hmm. can go to Google and you say roller derby in Stockholm, and then you have two leagues you can go to. Okay. In Gothenburg, we have three, depending on what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say Google what's near you, mm -hmm. because you never know. Mm -hmm. And if there is not a derby league near you, start one. <laughs> okay. I, I know they've, they've tried several times to start up a derby league in Jönköping. Mm -hmm. And I think they want to start one in Falun. Um, I think Jävle has one. But, you, you know, you you start with a group of people like yeah. Gothenburg Roller Derby. What were they? Like five people on skates. Mm -hmm. And then now we have grown to 100. And Duck City, a Duck City Roller started with, what, 14 skaters? Uh, oh, 16. And now they're also bigger. So, you know, you you build it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So I think we are on the end of my list, at least. Okay. Did we forget something <laughs> interesting? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can yeah. talk Derby all the time. But, um, well, if you haven't seen Derby, uh, Google it and watch it and come to the games. I mean, like us on, like every roller derby league you can find on Facebook and yeah. Instagram. People, <laughs> you're missing out. So how when I want to go to a game, how do I find uh, the game near near me? Like for in Gothenburg, for example. Um, many of our uh, many of us hosting games have ticket sales through mm -hmm. through uh, Tickster, uh, but I would say go and like us on Facebook, Gothenburg Roller Derby, Dark mm -hmm. City Rollers, Westvenska Roller Derby Selskapet, at least here in Gothenburg, and you know check out what what other teams are in nearby where you live like their facebook page look up their instagram and you will get their updates hopefully <laughs> <laughs> i think so <laughs> okay great great uh, that was super fun yeah this was really interesting <laughs> yeah so thank you and yeah thank you see you soon <laughs> yes <laughs> bye bye Thank <laughs> you.